Hi, I'm Doug Smith at Boulder Dam Hotel in Boulder City, Nevada. Doing another video here I thought you might enjoy. This is an experiment on static electricity and uh, it, it's also a source of EMI which I'll show you and it would also make a great science fair experiment if you have a, a kid say in junior high school, maybe even high school. Um, and you can use it to test ESD materials. So uh, let's give it a try here. So first let's look at what our experiment's going to be. We'll get the camera around over here. This is our uh, test setup. Let's show you what we have here. First we have a plain old AM radio from the 70s. We have it turned off the station. It's not a very good radio, it's not very sensitive, but we don't even want it to be. Then I have here an oscilloscope probe um, this is a Tektronik TPP-1000. It's a 1 gigahertz, 4 picofarad probe. A lot of active circuitry and signal processing here. It's a very good probe. Although it looks like the old probe, it's actually more sophisticated. Um, but I'm using it here. It almost doesn't matter which probe I'm using. It just happens to be a good probe. And we have it hooked to the same uh, Tektronik's MDO-4104B-6 oscilloscope. And this is channel 1 of the scope, which you're going to see on the... Uh, uh, video in a second, and I've just got it shorted by its own ground lead. That makes a little bit of a loop. Then I have this little thing here wrapped in aluminum foil. Why I did that will be obvious. I, I travel a lot of airplanes. I really don't want to test the airplane while I'm on it. This is a piece of static dissipative foam. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> we have some of those over here too. This is a piece of uh, Teflon. It's the opposite of static dissipative foam. And we get a charge on it when we rub it. And this is a static meter that shows static charge to know when we've got that charge. And then this, so we get it oriented to the thing, we can see it. These are two pieces of copper tape set down on um, a clear plastic. And I've got a gap as small as I could make there with razor blades. Then I cover it with packing tape, clear packing tape to seal it from the environment. And what happens is, if I charge this Teflon negatively, electrons will try to get away from it. And if I hold it near this, they'll jump that gap to do it. Now the gap is so small, you can hardly see it. In fact, you can't see the spark, it's too small. Um, breaks down at about 300 or 400 volts, I believe. So let's see what we might be able to use this for. The, um, first, let's talk a little bit about that device. So as you can see here, the total distance here is about 12 inches or 30 centimeters, side to side with a gap in the middle. Forms a dipole, and plain old copper tape we use in EMI labs, or you can buy at the hardware store slug and snail tape. 30 centimeters means this is tuned to about 400 megahertz. And I did that on purpose because 500 megahertz scopes are Dime a dozen these days, uh, even the little lung spot scopes, everything can, almost everything can do 500 megahertz. That means we'll be able to see on pretty much any scope uh, what this is radiating. The scope we're going to use, the tectonic scope, is actually one gigahertz, far more than we need. And the real trick here is to get the gap as small as possible. Uh, with the, put it down, cut it with the razor blade, you want the smallest possible gap. That gives you uh, the easiest to make spark and also the highest frequency energy. There's an article describing this somewhat on my website, https colon slash slash emcesd.com. Be sure you get that right, emcesd. There's a website out there that works off of a spelling of my site that uh, selling some stuff, which I don't do. But emcesd.com slash tt2001 slash tt060101.htm. Um, and I'll put a link to this at the bottom of this video so that you can... Uh, you can just click on that. So at first, let's look here on the table. And um, let's look at the static meter. The way you do one of these static meters is to turn it on. And you got to zero it out. So I zero it out to my other hand. If my two hands are kilovolts apart at DC, I'm, I'm in trouble. Uh, come and rescue me. Maybe give me a little CPR. <laughs> uh, so there it is, and it's registering a little bit just because I'm probably charged. Um, so now, watch what happens. 
Maybe I'll bring it up a little bit here. So I'm just going to rub it on my shirt and see what happens here. Do you see that? Get it closer. As I go past, it pegs the needle in the opposite direction. From a large surface, six, let's see, six inches from the surface, this reads true about that, except it's a large surface that would do that. So this is pegging it at more than five kilovolts. And since it's small, it's probably more than five kilovolts. These aren't meters aren't very accurate, but we can see that we're getting a, a big charge here. Okay, so what does that do? Now we'll take the uh, radio here. I'll turn it on. And I'll hold it near this thing, like this. And I'll charge this, make sure it's charged up on my shirt. It's negatively charged electrons are trying to get away from this. They'll charge that, they go across that gap. Watch. Uh, maybe we need to get the radio a little louder here. There we go. Uh, full volume. Well, I can chase them back and forth. Uh, you know, I bet it's a little humid today too, but I can, I'm chasing the electrons back and forth across the gap here. Sometimes you can hear it as it goes across the gap. Just I bring it close. Oh, this, this is a spark. And it jumps back again. Now it's working, although we usually get more than that. But here I can actually chase them back and forth across. Lots of sparks. Uh, hundreds or maybe thousands of them. So uh, this would make a great science fair experiment. Now let me see. Uh, one way to, to uh, test a conductive surface, watch this, let's do this. Let's take this aluminum foil over here. Put it on the aluminum foil. I think the antennas up here will probably get better response up here. Watch what happens when I get down under the aluminum foil. No sparks. The reason for that is this negative uh, Teflon repels electrons anywhere they are, including in the aluminum foil. So it repels electrons to some other part of this aluminum foil, which leaves a negative local charge, excuse me, leaves a local positive charge, which then cancels this negative and I can't get any uh, spark across here. So you can use this to test uh, ESD dissipated materials in your lab that are supposed to be a little bit conductive. So um, let's see how much EMI this can generate. I'm going to uh, sort of do this right here. Well, it's working better now in this way. I'm going to do this about uh, six inches above the probe there. And we're going to go over here and get the scope running. Here's our scope. And probably a good idea to change it to the channel I'm actually using. And we're going to go set up a coupling source one. One. Okay, there we are. So let's go to uh, one volt per division. I'll set the trigger at about a volt. And now I'll hold this little device about six inches above that scope probe and off the scale. And now it is very fast. So let's let's bring this from 40 nanoseconds to 5 nanoseconds and let's bring the position over here and it's off scale so let's try 5 volts per division and maybe we'll uh, bring the trigger up here to 4 or 5 volts so we only pick up the bigger events and again I'm about 6 inches over top of these uh, probe. in fact let me just show you what I'm doing here About six inches, 15 centimeters, and I'm doing this. And we'll see what happens. We got some really big ones there. Um, let's uh, let's put the trigger way up there so we only catch really large events. Ah, there was one. This is five volts per division, four nanoseconds. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, a little bit more than 25 volts. We're actually uh, 
um, off the screen there. Uh, now it's in focus. I think my hand, it was focusing on my hand instead, so I'll get the hand out of the way here. Um, we're at uh, about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 volts and a little bit more peak into that probe. That's an incredible amount of EMI from a spark you can't even see. And basically, it's being injected into this loop antenna. The problem is with probes, any probe, unbalanced probe, it just knows the voltage between the probe tip and where the ground lead fastens. If you happen to be forming a loop, which you always have to when you're making a voltage measurement like this, that loop can pick this stuff up, and, and you can tell this is very strong interference. We're getting 25 volts into that probe from about up here. So I just thought I'd let, show this to you and let you know that we got some big EMI here. It's also a great static experiment. All I need is a little AM radio, uh, copper tape, some plastic. Uh, if you don't have Teflon, uh, styrofoam cup works really well as well. Uh, don't really need a static meter. Um, one, actually, you have a static meter with you, possibly. You charge this thing up to 10,000 volts, and I can feel it on the hair of my arm now. That's your little electrometer. You probably can't see the hair standing up in my arm as I go over it. But that's how you can tell it's going to work. Well, thank you. And let's get the, get the camera back up here. And um, thank you for watching. Uh, these and other experiments are on my website. Probably should turn this light back on here so you can actually, there we go. So you can see me and I'm not in the shadows. These and other experiments are on my website, emcesd.com, or www.dsmith.org, dsmith.org will get you there. And uh, lots of experiments. I also do classes here using innovative techniques to solve, to show people innovative techniques to solve problems in their circuits. And often uh, these techniques have fixed problems in, in a day or two that uh, uh, insurers have been struggling with for weeks or months before that. So, love to have you come visit us here in Boulder City if you want, or we can do virtual courses and advice and things. Thank you again.